a pleasant uh, evening to all the dignitaries uh, over here. I welcome from the depth of my heart uh, our founder, Mr. Piyush uh, Panditji, sir, and uh, Snigdha Kadam, and also all the dignitaries of IIU. I also welcome the three speakers for the day. Uh, there is um, Ms. Ritika Bandari, Dr. Kalpana Dekshit, and Dr. Rashmi Tyagiji. So, I am Ravi Kumar here from Bangalore. I am a master trainer for FDP, soft skill training, and as well as verbal ability. I have put on 50 years of experience overall, which includes the 30 years in the Indian Army and uh, retired after. 30 years and for the last 17 years I am into training and development post my retirement. I am also a certified uh, trainer, internationally certified trainer for uh, FDP and also a master trainer for FDP. I am also an international certified trainer for uh, uh, students counseling and also a communication coach. Other than that, uh, I am the co-founder and the vice president of uh, She Space India which is a women empowerment uh, association and also trainers club, which is the uh, club for the trainers where we enhance the trainers uh, skills as well as give them opportunities to get the opportunities pan India and also at times abroad as well. So this is a small introduction about me. So about IIU, International Internship University, this IIU is a leading virtual education system and a global brand co confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. IIU is committed to providing highest quality education to all the learners of the globe, regardless of social or economic background. IIU is providing <laughs> more than 10,000 plus courses and internships to their learners across the globe with the help of its committed, experienced, and high caliber global educators. In a short span of time, IIU has spread its wing in 195 countries and six continents. Under the strong leadership, leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandisar, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. Piyush Pandisar has publicized the World Education Policy, that is WEP. Our one our motto is for one education, one foundation, and one world. IIU has taken the initiative to reach every learner in rural as well as urban areas through the Vidyanjali project, an initiative by the Ministry of Education, Government of India, to provide higher education as well as vocational training along with the internship opportunities. IIU is the revolution in education. So today's topic for the webinar is curriculum and pedagogy on national education policy 2020. The speakers for the day are in the sequence. There is Miss Ritika Bandari, who is a very well known speaker as well as a trainer. She is a HOD Chemistry GHPS New Delhi, CBSE resource person. A life global ambassador, author, podcaster, and CEDEX speaker as well. She is a recipient of many national and international awards. With 23 years of experience in the field of education, with diverse experience and strong track record, fostering child centered curriculum and student creativity. Resource person with CBSC, COE Delhi and teacher trainer with many organizations. Recounter and podcast creator who believes in interrogative 
cross culture with initiative approach by conducting workshops, webinars, and teacher trainings on topics like experimental learning, art integration, dramatics in teaching, science teaching strategies, NEP 2020, and many more. She has been appointed as Global Ambassador for SDG by AIEO and SPOC to promote quality education globally, keeping sustainable development goals till 2030. So a hearty welcome to you, Ritika ma'am. And uh, so the platform is yours. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the warm welcome. I'll just be sharing my screen and we'll talk about today's topic about NEP, mostly about the pedagogy part and the curriculum part. So I'll just be sharing my screen. I hope this is visible. So I start with a beautiful quote, which I really love, and that's teaching children is an accomplishment. Getting children excited about learning is achievement. And I think that's the crux of NEP because we want our children to get excited, let them be happy, let them be joyful, when it comes to learning. So keeping that in mind, NEP 2020 has brought a lot of changes uh, which are different from the traditional way we have been teaching from past so many years. So let us see what kind of changes have been brought up and what we can do as the stakeholders to make NEP more effective and how to use that in our teaching learning process. So before I start, I would just like to talk about the difference between education and learning, because these are two different terms, which are usually taken up as one. So what exactly is the difference between education and learning? So let us see. When I talk about education, it's passive. It, it's based on more of delivery. It's based on curriculum. It's extrinsic. It's more of repetition of a content. It is standardized and it's more for grades and certifications, right? But when I talk about learning, because learning is the key for NEP. So how we are changing now, we are changing from passive to active. Uh, earlier, students had a passive role, teacher had an active role. Now we want our students to have active role and teachers to have a passive role. That's the main difference which will be brought about. Second is from delivery to discovery. So it's just not that we are delivering the content, but we are promoting discoveries. If we are able to promote that, I think the work is done. So rather than being a curriculum based, it has to be curiosity based because we need to bring up curiosity in our students. Uh, from extrinsic, we move on to intrinsic, where the child feels like learning. It's not some external pressures which make him or her learn. So that's one thing very important. From repetition to creation, we don't want to repeat the same things. We want to make students create something. And I think that's what we are moving towards competency-based education. Uh, from standardized, it becomes personalized because every child has its own pace. And then skills are more important than grades and certification. So if we keep in mind that it's just not the grade and certification, we want skill education. I think that's the key in NEP 2020. So that is the difference between education and learning. So what is seen is when I talk about the curriculum part, curriculum in all subjects is reduced to its core essentials. Now, this is one thing which is very, very important. And the reason is they don't want a huge, humongous amount of curriculum where only rote memorization is taking place. The child is only mugging up and vomiting it out in the exams. No. The reduction in syllabus is that core essentials, minimum learning levels, they have to be kept in mind and the child actually understands rather than mugging up. And the child is able to use 
those concepts in real life scenarios. Now that's something very, very important. Then focus on critical thinking, inquiry, discovery, discussion, analysis, and the methods of teaching and learning should bring about holistic education. So that's something very important. We are talking about 360 degree. We are talking about discussions. We are talking about 21st century learners. We want collaboration. We want uh, critical thinking skills. So it's just not textbook learning, but much beyond that. And questions from students will be promoted uh, for experiential learning. Now that's something very important and I'm going to talk about experiential learning in detail today in my session. It needs to be collaborative and exploratory activities in classroom for experiential learning and deeper student learning. So I think the curriculum has been designed in such a way that we need to bring in changes in our teaching methodologies also. So I think uh, increasing your ways of teaching and taking up different kinds of pedagogies is the need of the R. So when I talk about holistic development, I think there are no hard separation of curricular, extracurricular, art, science, and vocational craft. So there is a beautiful integration, and it's just not the integration of the subjects, but Indian culture and ethos. So we want moral values also. We want our students to know about Indian culture also. And now there are no silos between humanities, science, or commerce streams. So a child has ability to take up anything, whatever he or she wants, whatever combinations they want. So that's something very nice. Uh, a kind of, you can say, a liberal art curriculum, which is found in most of the other developed countries. So this is something new, which is coming up. Then innovative pedagogies to be explored, such as experiential teaching learning methods, book promotion policies and digital libraries. So already we have a Swayam portal, we have Diksha, uh, where we could have a lot of content. So I think digital libraries setting up of this is something very important for uh, curriculum. Then holistic report card. Uh, that's again a 360 degree report card where just not the academic, but everything about the child needs to be assessed. Uh, vocational education integration from primary grades and a 10 day, uh, you know, bagless days for classes six to eight. So this has to be a part. Skill education has to be a part. Internships need to be a part of the curriculum. And then taking up local with their local artist as master instructors in school. So this kind of change is there, which is being brought up with the new national education policy. Uh, for even the assessments, we have Parak. Now this is performance assessment review and analysis of knowledge, and this is leading to holistic development. So there are certain norms, standards, guidelines. Uh, for example, guiding the state achievement survey, which is SAS, conducting the national achievement survey, which is NAS. I think everybody of us knows this NAS was done for classes uh, fifth to eighth to know the minimum learning level of children in different schools. Then monitoring achievement of learning outcomes in the country. So we are just not dependent now on the board examination of 10th and 12th, but before that also there are uh, points where a test could be taken and we could make understand that yes, the children are in the learning process. So it's just not uh, fixed for the urban, but for all the community, all the rural backgrounds also, so that each one of the child is getting the exact education, what is required. Now, focus on LOs, that means the learning outcomes. Now, this is something very important because we are just teaching, but is the child getting what we are going to teach? So learning objectives and learning outcomes are one thing which is very, very important. Talking about competencies, again, is very important. And I'll be talking about what exactly competency-based education system means. So modules on preparing and implementing pedagogical plans based on competency-based and outcome-based education for school leaders. Now, this is something very important integration of subjects through art. So I'll be talking about a little art integration. Then we have sport integrated, ICT integrated, storytelling as a pedagogy. I'll be talking about this also. 
and development of scientific temper. So development of scientific temper and inculcation of knowledge, then constitutional values such as patriotism, sacrifice, non-violence, honesty, peace. I think this is the focus of NEP 2020. So we need to have all these kind of things included in our curriculum. So first of all, because a lot is talked about what is competency-based education system. So if I look at this picture, what do I get? I get that there is one, uh, one place where everybody has to reach, but the path taken by different students is different. And the reason is that each child is unique. So every would, everyone would not take the same path. So flexible path and pace, but they are coming at the same place. That's the meaning of competency-based education system. So we have to keep in mind all the kind of unique learners in a class, and we have to have that inclusive character for all the students. So that is something very, very important to be kept in our mind when we are talking of competency-based education system. Now, when I talk about competency, it is a beautiful blend of knowledge, skills, and attitude. Now, what exactly is knowledge? Knowledge is knowing about something. And then acquiring skill creates a difference in the attitude. I'm just giving you an example. Suppose a person knows how to ride a bicycle. So a person knows that you have to sit on the bicycle, you have to balance, you have to paddle. So the knowledge is there, but maybe the person doesn't know how to ride a bicycle. So what happens when the person knows how to ride a bicycle, that's the skill which is attained. And then what happens? With knowledge and skill, the person becomes confident. So this is what we have to bring in, in our curriculum also. What we are doing is we are just giving knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. But the child must take that knowledge and enhance a skill. And when the child takes up that skill, automatically there is a change in the attitude. So when all the three are beautifully blended, that's what we mean by competence. So when I talk about experiential learning, now this is again a very important term which we are talking about, is about joyful learning, it's talking about art integrated learning, it's talking about activity based learning, case studies, sport integrated learning, inquiry based learning, collaborative learning, and even assessment as learning. So earlier what was done assessment was just uh, you know, uh, to gauge the learning outcome, but now assessment as learning, that is also a part of experiential learning. So these are the various strategies which we can use for experiential learning, pedagogy, like role play, field trips, films and documentaries, video projects, guest speakers, portfolios, art-based activities, group learning by students, peer tutoring, games and puzzles, and many more. So these are just few uh, ways of experiential learning. So when I talk of experiential learning, I think this is the model which comes into mind where there are four steps. The concrete experience, the reflective observation, abstract conceptualization, and active experimentation. And this is a beautiful cycle. So whenever we are teaching any concept, the pedagogy we are taking into consideration, we have to keep in mind that the cycle gets completed. It's just not the child is experimenting. Experimentation would be an experience, but then we have to make sure after that experiment, or after an activity, did the child reflect? Because reflection is a very, very important part of experiential learning. So if there is no reflection, your cycle doesn't complete. So after reflection and thinking, the child again experiments. So this cycle needs to be completed. So when we are teaching any concepts through any of the pedagogies, we have to keep in mind this called experiential learning cycle. So these are the four steps, concrete experience, as I already told you, it's just like a very simple example I'm taking. I want to make a cake and I took up a recipe on YouTube. So when I saw that, that was my experience. And then I tried making that. 
When I tried making, I found that the cake didn't come up well. So I observed that why didn't it come up well? Then I came to know that it didn't come up well because the mistake I did was with the oven timer, right? So what I have done, after experience, I have given a reflection to it. And after reflection, then next time again, I'm preparing it. So that's again my active experimentation. But now what I'm doing is that I'm keeping a view on the oven timer. So whatever mistake I did, I'm trying to improve on that after my reflection. And this is what we have to do in our teaching learning process also. So if this is happening, I think learning will automatically take place. So we have to keep in mind that the role of teacher and student in experiential learning becomes different. Teacher's role is guiding or just as a facilitator. And teachers take a passive role where students' role becomes active. They're encouraged to experiment. They're encouraged to investigate, show their creativity, curiosity, and have initiative. And students decide their own interest and pace of learning. So whenever we are planning an experiential learning plan, a lesson plan, we have to have realistic goals, then exciting topics, then you must know what are the needs and talents of the child, use a range of teaching approaches, select resources that are relevant, then assess and evaluate. So these are a few points. If we take these points into consideration, I think a lot can be different from what traditional ways we are taking in. So one of the way of experiential learning and which is one of my favorite is flipped classroom. So flipped classroom is the other way. You know, the teacher is not coming prepared and coming up with the lesson, but he or she is sending some video or simulation or games or demonstration to the children. Maybe I have sent a video and I ask the students to respond to those two to six questions after watching the video. And when they come to classroom, they discuss, they brainstorm, there can be collaborative projects, there could be teacher's input. So here the teacher has to be a guide, a facilitator, so that whatever concepts have to be made clear, at that point, the teacher is going to do that. And after the class, then there would be high order application or understanding of assessment. So this model is called flipped classroom, which is child-centric experiential learning. There are open discussion, teacher is a facilitator and it's inquiry driven. So we have to understand the difference between the traditional way where the teacher's role was a sage on the stage and moving on to a flipped classroom where the teacher's role is like a guide on the side. So uh, that was one experiential learning. I talked about competency-based and then a little about art integration. So we know that before a child talks, they sing, before they write, they draw, and as soon as they stand, they dance. So art is fundamental to human expression. So when we are teaching, when we are imparting our curriculum, why do we separate that art with our process? Why not integrate that art, maybe the dance form, a music form, a visual art form, and make our lessons or make our topics more interesting. So beyond tools and technologies, students need to solve tough problems. They need to collaborate effectively and express ideas in a new way. So it's just not tools and technologies. I think we want our students to become problem solvers. And when we want them to have problem solving techniques, we need to give them certain stories, right? So if we are teaching through stories, I think stories are beautiful way of bringing in a lot. And I'll just be giving you a few examples. So one thing is that it is proven by scientists and psychologists that facts are 20 times likely to be more remembered if they are a part of story. And there are strong impulses uh, which come up in a body uh, because they make those story patterns and they help in building connections across discipline. So if uh, we want, just not the academic, but we want to build empathy, sympathy, love, courage, happiness, holistic development, 
then that can be made through stories because the stories affect three H. Now, what's that three H? The head, the heart, and the hands. And these are the domains, the psychomotor domains or the affector domain or the cognitive domains. So all the three domains of the child are affected through stories. So bring in stories in your classroom and that's a beautiful pedagogy to make children learn a lot. So according to neuroscience, the story helps us feel good by release of certain hormones and brain places us inside the story. So storytelling and drama are two things which are very beautifully integrated in classrooms. I'll be giving you a few examples. It's just one example where I'm giving example for image theater. Now you want to teach a concept of photosynthesis and you showed up a video or a picture of two things, one plant and another person who's preparing food in the kitchen. So just give them the situation and ask them what do they gauge out of these two pictures? What do they understand out of those two pictures? And maybe when they talk about preparing food, then the child may question that, yes, we are preparing our food in the kitchen, but where is the kitchen for the plant? And then you can talk about photosynthesis, about leaves and different parts of photosynthesis. So a very simple way, but giving such kind of things or maybe children behaving like uh, you know, plants and children behaving like a person who's preparing food in the kitchen can give a beautiful blend of the two things and children will understand that concept very easily. Uh, now, this is a beautiful story where you want to bring up life skills because again, life skill is something very, very important. So uh, story building and dramatic pauses. So I'm just taking it up an example that there were Pink children, which were normal children, which were durable children, and then there were green children, which had funny faces and funny noses. So one day the pink children landed in the area where the green children were there. Give them the situation. And then the green children started bullying them. And then ask, what will happen? If you are in this situation, what will happen? How will you tackle the situation? So giving them these opportunities and giving them these ideas will make them think something would be initiated in their minds. They'll start thinking, they'll come up with their answer. And as a teacher, as a facilitator, then you can bring in the right thing. So stories are really important in curriculum, in life skills, and in many more situations. So uh, again, dramatics, you know, children can move in circular path as planets, uh, you want to teach Bernoulli's theorem and children are behaving as if they are flying or, uh, you know, making an electric circuit using students and just role playing and running from one end to another, or maybe some dramatic ice breaking activities. It all depends on you, how you want to bring in these elements into your classroom. Maybe uh, you're teaching social science and you want to have a youth parliament in your classroom or you want to have a MUN in your classroom. It all depends on how you want to take up. Even a maths teacher can have a circle and tell students to behave as a tangent or a diameter. So just having a small role play or drama can actually improve the concepts very easily. So if we are using these kind of pedagogies, a lot of difference can be made in the learning process. Again, this is a technique which is called jigsaw strategy, which is a very important part of NEP 2020 peer tutoring. So how to use this strategy, I'll just be taking up two minutes more that uh, we have some topics which we divide amongst students and they are the expert groups, maybe a group of four, they're talking about a particular topic. They, they talk and as a facilitator, you are there to help them out. And when they master those topics, then you reshuffle them and then they are teaching each other. So such kind of peer tutoring pedagogies also help a lot in understanding. So art integration could be you know, a visual way of creating these beautiful, um, like just a simple apron and they have made a complete digestive system. So this is one way which we can use. There are a lot many more ways. Uh, clay modeling again, a beautiful use of clay in coming up with any kind of creativity. So give them these opportunities in your classroom where clay modeling or visual art or music or dance or drama is being used up in 
the teaching process. And when these things happen in the class, the class automatically becomes a joyful class. And I think whatever we want to achieve in NEP 2020, we will be able to take up. So thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, it was uh, really an amazing uh, presentation by you. And uh, so the entire uh, curriculum and the pedagogy was uh, very nicely explained uh, in this. Uh, to be personally speaking, uh, one of the key learning for me was that uh, I used to use uh, Cobb's experiential uh, learning cycle only for uh, adults learning. Now it was a good thing that even it can be used uh, in the school level and even in the elementary level as well. So it was a nice thing and it was uh, put in a very nice way. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you so us. much. And uh, <clears throat> so our next speaker for the day is uh, Dr. Kalpana Dikshit. Dr. Kalpana Dekshit is a research supervisor at Barkatullah University, Bhopal, having 24 years of experience in teaching, training, and research. Served as a UGC approved professor, principal director, and dean at different institutes of Barkatullah University and Shivaji Rao Patil University guided and awarded many candidates for doctoral degree and PG MPhil courses. International Certified Counselor and Coach, MSME Certified Trainer and IC ICF Certified NLP Leadership Coach, published many research papers and books with many national and international awards like Best Director, Young Scientist, Best Mentor, of Central India International Researcher and Award, Global Education Leader and International Influential Educator of the Year 2022, Resource Person and Subject Experts of NCT, NCERT, UGC, MHRD, MSME, NSDC, and National Career Service. Ambassador, Advisor, Board Members, and Director, Academic, National, and International organizations, global director, global educators for education, training, and research and educational management. I welcome you very heartily, ma'am, Kalpana Dikshit, ma'am, for this uh, forum. And uh, I, with your huge experience and uh, so much of uh, knowledge uh, filled in you, I'm very much sure that uh, you'll be putting on a very bright light on the minds of uh, all the listeners and the viewers and all of us who are here uh, on this uh, curriculum and pedagogy of uh, the new education policy 2020. So it's over to you. Yeah, thank you, Ravi sir. Uh, such a warm welcome and a beautiful introduction of mine. And I would like to say thank you to Ritika also for <laughs> solving my 50% issues in there. And I am really very glad to, uh, would like to thank you, Dr. Snigda also, Mr. Pius Pandit also. So here I'm Dr. Karpana Dikshin. I am going to start my presentation. Actually, my today's presentation is based on the curriculum and pedagogy. Curriculum and pedagogy is the theme. And I will totally explain how to integrate all the pedagogical methods in curriculum. Because curriculum transformation and curriculum restructure is the main prime concern of our NEP 2000-2020. So uh, uh, how can we integrate all the concepts in one curriculum and how to impart to different pedagogical methods? Here, uh, Ritika has been explained very well, uh, uh, very well manner, the how different types of pedagogy, role modeling, games, play games, uh, storytelling, everything. So I will focus on the curriculum aspects of this. So uh, can I share my screen, please? Yeah. I'm here just sharing my screen. Yes, sure. Yeah, this is my screen. Is my screen visible to you all? Yes, ma'am, it is visible, clear. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, thank you. 
So what I would like to explain you that curriculum and pedagogy in school learning should be holistic, integrated, enjoyable, and engaging. And this is my first slide. Being a representative of IIU, I am here presenting national education policy, a part of curriculum pedagogy. A structure of NDP two zero two zero. Actually, it has been divided mostly in four parts. Part one is the school education, and part two is higher education in NDP two zero two zero. Part three, other key areas of focus of NDP two zero two zero. In part fourth, making it happen, and we pick two zero two zero. So I would like to highlight on this part: curriculum and pedagogy in school. Learning should be holistic, integrative, enjoyable, and engaging. So let me first explain you all those who don't belong to the education discipline. I would like to explain what is pedagogy actually. Pedagogy can be defined as the art of teaching. Pedagogy involves being able to convey knowledge and skill in way that a student can understand remember and apply pedagogical skills can generally be divided into classroom management skill and content related skills in whatever content textbook resource material in house or out of activity of the schools are that is known as the curriculum so my major intent is how to impart that curriculum by different pedagogical approach what are the characteristics of a good pedagogy that is encourage higher order of thinking allow student input and control collaborative learning conversation encourage student to be proactive member of society meaningful problem based learning scaffolding supporting students learning and socially supporting so this is the characteristic of good pedagogy so how this pedagogy will work in action preparing content then how content is presented or delivered to learners then connects with assets that are needed to present content and pull together these assets to create cognitive psychology based learning process and evaluation of the learning process rather it is working correctly or not and then again revise and reconstruct the content this is new structure of curriculum pedagogy as per the ndp 2020 we have restructured the whole curriculum structure that is divided in mainly in four stages foundation stage five year included anganwadi bal vatika and class 1 and 2 then preparatory stage three years that is class 3 to 5 then middle stage three years class 6 to 8 and high school four years in two parts that is 9 10 and 11 12 the curricular and pedagogical structure this is five plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 design consisting consisting of under flag foundational stage we have to introduce multi level play activity based and pedagogy of ecce early childhood care and education then at preparatory stage and middle stage we have to introduce experiential learning across the science mathematics art social science and humanities then subject oriented pedagogy cell and curricular style style at high school and higher secondary level in class 9 and 12 9 10 11 12 12 the reform what are the major reform in school education under 2020 they are new national curriculum framework for ecc school teacher and teacher education board examination will be low stake based on knowledge medium instruction till at least grade 5 and preferably till middle school and beyond in home language and mother tongue then 
360 degree holistic progress card of child we have to build on different pedagogical stream and different content and curriculum. Then tracking student progress for achieving learning outcomes. What is the ultimate learning? And National Assessment Center, PADAC has to be established and working. NTA to offer common entrance examinations for university level, for undergraduate and postgraduate course. Then National Professional Standard for teachers, NPST has to be built. And book promotion policy and digital library is to be established in each and every block, district, and villages. And transparent online self disclosure for public oversight and accountability towards education. Then we should come on the holistic development of the learner. Overall, thrust of curriculum and pedagogy reform to move towards real understanding and learning, how to learn and away from the culture of rote learning. How to learn is the main important aspect of new education policy, because we are pouring knowledge on the brain of the child that is not sufficient. And what about the skill? What is about the competency? So we have to teach them how to learn and away from the culture of rote learning. Then aim of education will not only be cognitive development, but also building character and creating holistic and well-rounded individual equipped with the key 21st century skill, as well as he must have developed the life skills. Then specific sets of skill and value across domains will be identified for integration and incorporation of each stage of learning from preschool to higher education. Then we will come on the NEP 2020, holistic development, how to build the learner, holistic development of the learner. I will highlight the main point here. Curriculum content will be reduced in each subject to its core essential to make it fair for critical thinking and more holistic discovery-based, discussion-based, and analysis-based learning. This is very important. Then there will be no hard separation among curricular, extracurricular, or core curricular area. They must be integrated in one curriculum itself. Then concerted curricular and pedagogical initiative at relevant stage. Concerted curriculum means the discussion with the regional, national, and block level of experts, and the discussion with, with the regional periphery, what is suitable to them as per their tradition and culture. That must be included. Then early childhood care and education is the most important aspect because this has been described as a foundation stage. So for foundation stage, we have to focus on the cognitive development of the child, socio-emotional, ethical development of the child, cultural, artistic development, and the development of communication and early languages, literacy and numeracy. And this literacy and numeracy concept is also applicable to the adult learner also. A national curricular and pedagogical framework for early childhood care and education and CEFP for children up to the age of eight will be developed by the NCERT. Curricular integration of essential subjects. We know what are the pedagogy. We are moving towards many pedagogy, rote learning, like storytelling, and experiential learning, discovery learning, discussion-based learning, dialogue learning, collaborative method, and uh, concrete method, experiential, many things are there. But how to integrate all these essential subjects as a core skill? So curriculum inter integration of essential subjects and skills, every student will take a five year long course during its middle stage of six to eight. That gives a survey and hands-on experience so that 
they can inculcate and develop their vocational skills. Finally, along, I am mentioning this because this is a field work, field activity, so that they can inculcate the value of vocational education and they can learn the life skills. And that life skill will be supported to them for more independence. Basic training in health. This is also important after Corona and during the Corona, we have found lagging behind this. So we have implemented in our national education policy that basic training in health, including preventive health, mental health, nutrition, personal and public hygiene, and first aid will also be included in the curriculum. And scientific as explanation of the detrimental damaging effect of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. We have to, we cannot move away from this teaching. We have to implement in our curriculum. We have to implement in our day-to-day -day life that we should make our generation aware about the bad effect of these drugs and alcohol and all those things. Because teachers are the major influence in the child brain and personality. When teachers say this is not good, they will definitely apply it. So this is the main important focus. Then competency-based learning and education. The assessment tools, immediate assessment, formative assessment, summative ass assessment. This has to be aligned with learning outcome capabilities and disposition of the learner. And we have to achieve all these in all stages through experiential based learning. And that must be adopted in day-to-day -day curriculum for making learning effective and lifelong. This is the flow diagram of experiential learning. What is this? Actually, experience where students participate and engage in learning activity. Then share and review. Then involve in the process of experimentation. Then generalize the inference and after that apply in their personal life. This is, this will work like do, reflect, and apply. This is in short, the experiential learning. As I have told you earlier, it has been introduced in all the stages like storytelling based pedagogy, competency based learning, and as a as an of evaluation of the learner, immediate and effective evaluation. Then essential core material, what is the essential core material? We have to discuss with the experts. We have to discuss with the local educator. We have to discuss with the uh, curricular designer and developers. And we have to apply the flexibility in this curriculum, school curriculum, so that constructive learning can be occurred. And teacher will have the choice of textbook they employ among sets of the, if there are supposed for a particular subject A, there are 12 books proposed by a different ICAC or CBSC board. The teacher has a choice to select any one or two of them. This is the ma major aim. Teacher must have given flexibility to adopt and execute the curriculum according to their own way. And teacher can teach in the manner so that learning our school will be fulfill the need of the society. So this is a great interaction between teachers, thought, and society. This is the major core value of NEP. Then constructive learning model. This is concrete experience, observation, and reflection, forming aspect concepts, and testing in new situation. This is also very much important for the high school and higher secondary level, when we will bring the student to the lab, outer in the, uh, either in the open lab or in the closed lab, whether it is language lab, mathematics lab, scientific lab, a uh, school playground to use mathematics, sequencing, ordering, and serial points. So this is the way how constructive learning can be generated and developed. Then topic center and project-based club and circle. It is 
the main recommendation of NEP because we are only pouring the knowledge on the brain and head of the child. We have to develop them for the society. We have to develop them for their personal well-being, for their independence, existence. So what we have to do? We have to encourage them to participate in different curricular, co-curricular activities and according to their interests, we have to assign them different clubs like science club, math club, language club, music club, dance club, everything is there. So previously what we did, we have excluded all these activities and we would like to call them extracurricular activities. Now, this is not necessary. Now we are integrated all these activities within the, within the school curriculum so that a student can develop their habits, develop their interests and perform well in the future career. Then reduction in curriculum, this is also important. Teaching so many subjects in one class, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, this is not possible because we want a holistic, developed, individual, independent child. So what we have to do? We have to reduce the curriculum. In which way we can reduce? Curriculum content will be reduced in each subject. So to its core essential. Make space for critical thinking or more realistic inquiry-based discussion and discussion-based analysis-based learning. How can we do this? For example, if we are introducing 10 or 12 units in a one subject, so rather than including 10 units, we should merge all the units in four and five so that we can give the learner opportunity to develop their critical and analytical thinking, reasoning and discussion, because we are running fast to complete the curricula. This is not the way or aim of education. We have to give the input so that we can draw the output from the child. Then integrated curriculum, this has been suggested that we have to develop scientific temper and evidence-based thinking. We have to, to give health and nutritional, physical education, fitness and wellness. And sport also, we have to provide them collaboration and teamwork opportunity. We have to develop digital literacy, coding and computational thinking. Then global citizenship education, DCED, because now education is become global education become a commodity. Everyone wants to come in India and Indian students want to go there under exchange program and under migration for their higher studies. So we have to make them a global citizen also. An introduction of contemporary and contemporary subject knowledge, artificial intelligence, design thinking, blockchain, coding, etc. Mathematics and computational learning must be given primary emphasis and bagless day will be encouraged for the middle school age so the child will enjoy learning and create some vocational skills during this bagless period. No hard separation, as I have told you earlier. Increase flexibility and choice of subject. Curricular, extracurricular, or co-curricular among arts, humanity, sciences or between vocational. Students have flexibility. Students have liberty to choose the subject and stream. This is not necessary that he is opting chemistry, so he must have to uh, uh, opt biology and math with them. This is not. He can opt chemistry with history. He can opt history, chemistry and music. So this is the flexibility on the part of learners also. That will give them proper opportunity to develop holistically and comprehensively. So there is no clear-cut demarcation. Every subject is one part of the curriculum and students have flexibility to opt them. Textbook with local content. It is more important now that the dispute, dispute is going on and Supreme Court is giving direction and a judgment that so all the national policy of education will work according to the IEP guidelines. 
so what is the dispute disputes of language disputes of language, that can be solved because we have given the liberty to develop the curriculum according to their regional, regional languages so that dispute has been already resolved and the state will prepare their own curricula which may be based on their local tradition and nature and hereditary important content and significantly reduce the weight of school bags we are trying to work on this how to reduce the bag of the student there are many ways we can integrate all the subjects and curriculum in one semester or in two semester also so we are focusing on to reframe the board exam in the semester based system also this is the way and indian knowledge system is very much important indian knowledge system including tribal knowledge and indigenous indigenous ways of learning will be covered our vedas our vedic education our contemporary culture and traditional culture and our art our heritage all things our epics they all are very much important now we are making children robot not a holistic person so nep has been recommended to in include the knowledge indian knowledge system indian tradition indian culture and indian heritage as a part of our curriculum and this is very appreciable nowadays and video documentary on spiritual limits of india this must have to be developed so that students can learn and understand about the great personality about the great epic writer about the historical character of our culture and we have to develop modern and ethical learning not in as a part of separate moral education subject on the basis of daily routine we have to inculcate moral values in our school system in our curricular system and the ncert and ct will develop guidelines for the education of gifted children gifted children mean the top 1% because if we inculcate them if we can give them proper support then we will definitely stop our brain to be drained we have to retain our intellect intellectual power in our country itself so we have introduced a specialization of gifted education program and we have also already defined different guidelines and different incentive scholarship and other program and other activities like olympiad and competition smart classroom in a phased manner so that we can we can modify and shape our gifted student reimagining vocational education our vision by 2025 at least 50% of learner through the school and higher education system can have exposure to vocational education so that they can be develop their competence their skill and at least one vocation has to be introduced and we have a timeline period for introduction of this vocational scheme grade 6 8 and 10 also and this vocational courses can be given either online or offline mode if people are saying this is a burden to the students they can offer online way this vocational system now major reforms in higher education this is also one of the important form of curricular and pedagogy implementation of nep graded autonomy phasing out the phases within 15 year we will set all the top of education who are working on paper who are employing the corrupt practices in education who are not following the policy and norms of the nep 2020 on the quality of education so this is for this we have national mission on mentoring independent boards of governor single leg regulator single window system and many more schemes has to be introduced at higher level also transforming assessment this is also important 
if you are giving holistic education for the development of all round development of the child how can you assess the skill and competencies this, this is very important so the board exam for grade 10 and 12 will be continue but in different format including multiple choice question objective type question competency based question and i think that there will be semester system also for board in the current session or in the future session also then use of technology i am moving just by uh, fast because i know the time constraint use of technology how to apply technology in present education system we have to utilize technology in education planning teaching learning and assessment administration and management regulation self disclosure minimum human interface and increasing access for this advantage group divyan friendly education software e content in regional language virtual lab national education technology forum tetf and digitally equipping school teachers and students and national assessment center para has to be has to be established for the review and analysis of knowledge for the holistic development and national testing agency nti is already working very smartly for conducting all type of entrance exam and competitive examination then other supportive mechanism technology based tool language appropriate teaching learning material and regular or special schooling different resource centers and knowledge alternative forms of school parallel school can be worked then national research fund national research foundation internationalization of education integration of vocational teacher and professional education setting up of new quality higher education and special education zone to be built up that has to be developed in near 15 or 20 years and then national education technology forum and mhrd to be renewed as memorandum of education with different international or national organization and universities then foundation let us see outcome of nep and thank you here i am finishing my presentation in the last few slides i have moved fast because of the time constraint is there and uh, ravi sir i am again thankful to you it's nigda madam i am thankful to you thank you the founder of iiu mr pyun sandesh pyush pandit sir for giving this wonderful opportunity and for this wonderful initiative to launch on your wonderful university platform i am thankful to you all that and dr rashmi madan i am really thankful to you also that you have hear me patiently and waiting for your turn thank you thank you so much each and every one thank you so much dr uh, kalpana dikshit ma'am and uh, it was uh, really a wonderful uh, presentation from you uh, which was uh, really very well uh, articulated about the good uh, pedagogy and its actions uh, and uh, as well as uh, holistic development uh, of learners uh, and its ben benefits implementing it for the life skills at an early stage in the schools also it was a very good uh, presentation on experiential learning and uh, choice of options uh, of uh, choosing the subject for the students uh, gives the wide range of uh, scope for the students to self themselves self development thank you so much and uh, it was a uh, really very wonderful session and uh, i do present my gratitude to you from the depth of my heart Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, now our next uh, speaker for the day, is, uh, Dr. Rashmi Tagame. Dr. Rashmi Tagame is a very well-seasoned educationist, DBSC master trainer, Navodaya Vidyalaya master trainer, science communicator, environment activist, doctorate in. from iit rookie masters in education from mumbai university trained as a principal at iim bangalore 
Resource person, Rita Colombo, Sri Lanka. Resource person, Axford University Press. So I welcome you from the depth of my heart, Dr. Jackson, for enlightening all of us and all the viewers and listeners across the globe on the curriculum and the pedagogy of the new education policy 2020 of India. The platform is yours. Namaskar. And uh, I think I'm very fortunate that uh, I'm invited by IIU and uh, Mr. Pandit, Piyush Pandit, to join this galaxy of knowledgeable people, educators, and whatnot. And hearing them talking about the NEP 2020 National Education Policy, it is really wonderful. And uh, they have already talked about it in a comprehensive way. And I think then I'll take it in a general way. And for that, uh, I just remember something about Einstein because I'm from a science background, but due to the transformations in education, I'm also inclined towards arts these days. So Einstein, you know, as all of you know about him more than me, that uh, he was a professor in a very good, I mean, excellent university, I should say, of that time. And uh, then as usual, all of us, you know, we just uh, do all the regular things also, setting the papers for examinations, corrections, teaching, learning, lectures, and all that. So he had set a paper first year, it was really good. The supervisors and the students, they were very happy that a very good question paper has come. Second year, fine, the same question paper was there. They just, some of them raised the eyebrows, but still okay. And what happened, you know, for the surprise of everyone, third year also the same paper was given. Then the supervisor, she was very nervous. She has gone to, Einstein, sir. And then she said, sir, third year also the repetition of the same paper. Einstein said, well, there is no problem. It's okay. I have given this paper for the consecutive years. And then he said, see, the questions are same, but the answers are going to be different. So this is what I want to say that after the transformations due to the pandemic, and in the 21st century, the answers are different. For example, if in 2018, you were telling the student, don't bring the mobile to the school, and they were not given any access to the mobiles. Okay, but how about today? Will you allow the students to use the mobile or not? So this is what Einstein has predicted long back. And uh, all of you have said so much about it. I, I don't think that I have to repeat everything. And uh, it was really wonderful hearing the educators. And I feel that the transformations which have taken place in education, that they are really good and joyful. And now we have to teach the students in the way that we should have a happy curriculum. As today we are talking about the curriculum and the pedagogies. And I think I can include here the assessment also. So in the education, school education, mostly we are just handling these three things. And all of you know about the traditional teaching learning system and the assessment systems, but now it has changed and different types of very good pedagogies are there. And, you know, we have got foundational stage, preparatory stage, middle stage, and secondary stage. And already Kalpana ma'am has talked about it. And now what we have to do, the syllabus is given to us and the syllabus is going to be the same, but we have to just modify into a curriculum that how it will be presented to the students. So as it says on its own, that preparatory stage, you know, we will be just uh, giving to the students 
some very good presentations, reading, writing, and all these listening skills. And we'll be showing them with the puppets. The puppets is a very good way of teaching the students, not only in you know, these preparatory classes, but I will say it is good for 11th and 12th standards also, because there they can use this pedagogy to talk about the scientists, the biographies of the scientists also, that the puppet is talking, you know, like a, maybe Faraday, Michael Faraday, Newton, and talking on its own that what I have done. So the students, they can do these things at this level also. And then so many new things have come up. And I will say the integrated pedagogy. So that is important means when you are teaching something in the class, then you should not teach only in one, through one method. You have to teach it in different methods. Different methods means as everybody has just told storytelling method. And then it is uh, just now, uh, you know, they were talking of uh, art, uh, integration of art into science and then discussion method, the role play method. And I will say in one or two words, creative pedagogies. And then we have got game-based pedagogies. And there are so many things like that. So I will say that we can have them all together. And now disciplinary, that kind of education is impressed upon. And when we talk of multidisciplinary, as we are going to use it in the higher classes, the secondary classes, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th. So there we should understand the meaning of multidisciplinary. And for that, I will say that it means you are going to just integrate the different ways, the different subjects into one thing. So whatever we are teaching them, suppose we take the example of an animal and which animal, which everybody is thankful to. Suppose a cow, so cow, uh, we can integrate so many, you know, uh, subjects with this and at every level, at the primary level, secondary level and senior secondary level, we can integrate the science, the art, the advertisement, the literature and, uh, in the, and the research also. So in, you know, the classes like preparatory stage, we can just tell them that everybody should take milk and we can show them the Amul advertisements and we can ask them to paint it and then write the slogans and the advertisement. And then we can tell them the poetries. So many good poetries are about the cow. And then, you know, in literature, Prem Chandra Ji has written such a good, you know, novel about the, uh, you know, Do Beloki Jodi and what what is the morale of the story that we can ask the student? So value is integrated. And uh, then after that, a movie is also made on this. So this is literature. And even we can integrate the maths as a multidisciplinary cow project, which I'm talking about. And we can ask them to make a grid for a geometry lesson where they can just uh, copy the picture of a calf on the other paper and they can even enlarge it. So the maths is also integrated into this. So this I'm talking about the preparatory stage. And then we, when we go to the secondary stage, then we can ask the students to integrate it with the SST because in the different you know, countries, different types of cows are there. And then we can integrate it with mythology. Everybody knows Indian mythology, Kamdhenu and Greece and Egyptian. Also, they were just worshipping the cow. And then when we come to 11th and 12th, we talk about, you know, the medicinal urine, Panch Gavve. And then we talk about the proteins which are present in the, you know, milk. And then we can 
just imagine a painting of Yashoda Maya and she is just making the butter out of the curd and uh, Krishnaji, the baby Krishna is just clinging to her. And now how much science is there in this, you know, the instruments, the engineering here, I'm talking about steam, science, technology, engineering, arts and maths. So this, uh, the instrument in which she's making the butter, it is an engineering, it is an art. And then science, I ask everyone, everybody can answer me, centrifugal force. So uh, that kind of, uh, you know, painting, and of course the painting is there. And uh, then what else is there? That is the emotional connection between the mother and the child. So that emotional balance also. So I feel that that way we have to teach the student. So that multidisciplinary in that level and so much research. I asked my students when I was in a rural school of Maharashtra to uh, distill the urine. And after the distillation of the urine, it, may, it, it was used as a medicine. And in you know, foreign countries also in the cold drinks, some quantity of urine is added and it is written outside that urine is added. So this way it can be taught through the whole, you know, from primary level to the 12K level. And here, you know, because all of you, the great, you know, educators have already talked about NEP. So I think I'm trying to give this kind of, a, you know, uh, I can say ideas to everyone. And then I'll talk of versatility. The NEP 2020, when uh, we are talking about it, then we have to see versatile. When we talk of versatility, we remember what? Mona Lisa, the painting, Leonardo da Vinci. He has made this beautiful painting. And let's look at uh, the profile of uh, Leonardo da Vinci is that he had learned the you know, biology. Why he has learned the biology? He wanted to make a beautiful portrait. He was just a, a sculptor. He was a painter. And then he has learned physics also to give the light and shade effect while painting. So that kind of, you know, uh, versatile people. And let's come to the sport. If we are not talking of the sport, then how the NEP will be complete because in sports, we can teach so much to the students. Then we talk of Kapil Dev. Kapil Dev was a good bowler. He was doing good batting. And then he was doing good fielding also. The, similarly, our students, they should be multitasker because in future they have to do multitasking. So that way, you know, we have to teach the student in such a way, giving these examples. And uh, suppose we talk of the science, then I will say that as all of you know, that these kinds of standardized exams of three hours, which are based on the memorization only will not be there in future. I'm very confident about it, but they will be phased out slowly. And as Kalpana Madam, she told that uh, by 2025, uh, most of the implementation will start taking place. So they'll be phased out means we have to use the word competency-based. In the competency-based education, the concept is given by the teacher and the concept is very important. And then after that, we have to see that what is the ability of the student? So when we will, we will be doing the assessment of the student, you know, assessment is very important. We give a certification to the student that what they have learned. So for that, we have to just find out that what a student can do and he is going in which line accordingly by whether he is going to be a good musician. Here we will, of course, talk about, <clears throat> you know, multi, multiple intelligence by Gardner, because everybody is different and individual differences are there. And therefore, you know, some people will be good musicians, some people will be good thinkers, philosophers, and actors maybe, and writers, because now, you know, 
these uh, uh, kind of which kind of uh, employability is there it will be there we don't know and uh, the two speakers they have talked about the robotics and uh, you know these new digitalization of education so in that context the assessment may be uh, of open book test and they will be concept based only and maybe mcqs mcqs have already entered the arena of assessment we all of us know and uh, now uh, i think that way uh, everybody is talking and i'm th thankful to the iiu that uh, they are really giving such an uh, you know exposure to us you know because when i am talking here i have listened to all of you so i have Im imbibed it so much but then uh, you know i will like to show you one uh, uh, ppt also because uh, i like the creative pedagogy and i tell you when i was at iit rurki i was not really studying uh, so much i was participating in the sports i was participating in the debates competitions and then i was playing billiards i was into the athletics and uh, all those things but i just got the certificates i never got you know any marks or uh, any credits for that and i was doing painting also i was participating in hobbies club also but now the things have changed so much that the students are getting the credits for all these things because now we have got liberal art universities and uh, now this is for the creative pedagogy which has which has become very important uh, these days and let's see how we can uh, do this creative pedagogy so let's define it in a simple way teaching creatively teaching for creativity so when we talk of creativity then we always remember bloom's taxonomy and all of you know about that pyramid which starts from you know lots lower order and then we go up and that is the creativity and the creativity is talked about by nep 2020 and we have to give you know research based pedagogy to the students you know so that they will learn that how they can do research and they can do the creativity research means it is whatever is there and then find out new more about it then creativity is also like this that we have to give something new and then how what kind of creativity we will give and all of you know such wonderful pedagogies are there kalpana madam has talked about the storytelling and when i talk of storytelling then i remember one story and i will not take much of time i'll just say that uh, okay one day there was an old man and it was a very cold night and then uh, he had entered a village and he wanted a shelter he knocked at many doors but people have not let him in and in the end when it was very cold and uh, it was the time also all the, it was darkness everywhere then he had found a shelter for himself under a small roof and it seems that here many people are coming and sitting so he just uh, slept for some time then a sound of you know horse coming towards him he heard us you know trotting of the horse and a woman was riding on the horse and as soon as this lady a beautiful woman has come on the horse under that you know roof all the you know doors of the houses they opened and the people came out of that and the light was coming out of those houses and many people you know old young and the children they have come there and this lady started telling the stories and that man you know he was really amazed i mean it he was really troubled that they have never opened the door for me they never invited me but now they are very happy so that way the story session was going on and on and uh, then she said okay now everybody can go home and then this man old man asked her could i know who you are she said aap mujhe nahi jante main to kahani hu she said i am a story and then she asked him who you are sir 
देन ही सेड आई एम लाइक यू आई एम नॉलेज मैं ज्ञान हूँ लेकिन मैं जहां जाता हूँ लोग मुझे एक्सेप्ट नहीं करते हैं द पीपल आर नॉट एक्सेप्टिंग द नॉलेज एज मच एज दे आर एक्सेप्टिंग द स्टोरीज देन शी सेड डोंट वरी यू कम बिहाइंड मी बोथ ऑफ अस विल गो एंड देन यू कैन गिव योर नॉलेज थ्रू द स्टोरीज आप कहानियों के माध्यम से बच्चों को ज्ञान दे सकते हैं so this is what i am telling it is very important the storytelling and learning pedagogy's branch of uh, you know leading role of creativity this is what i have already talked about and uh, i think uh, uh, sir will say that the time is running out so i'll finish it fast so we have to tell the stories to the students and then creative teaching creative learning teachers should be creative uh, creative pedagogy and all that so we should have a creative self efficacy creative growth mindset environmental support for creativity and buoyancy in teaching positive effect as i have told uh, through my story so negativity is not there and this is my you know perfect uh, you know take uh, which i should say a take away for all of you that we should use these pedagogies role play role play this is what when we are giving trainings to the teachers we are telling to giving them some topic and then they are doing the role play so everybody is participating and the students are learning a lot if they are doing their own role plays then they are learning a lot and then the radio shows okay because uh, i was also giving for uh, all india radio some talks and people listen to the talks so we can take our students for that demonstrations are very good and when we talk of demonstrations then we will say the flip learning simulations all of you know about that because they really see what is happening instead of just going through the textbook and then mind mapping is very good in the science subjects and because there are always a flow chart and all that and storytelling i've talked i've told you about and we have to take the students beyond the classroom doors and to the field trips as i was talking of the cow then we had taken our students to the you know ra milk uh, colony and there they could see how the packaging of the milk is done so they were see seeing the real time things and then the games and uh, when somebody uh, when they are playing cricket then the muscular a movement and how much energy in throwing a ball and then what is the velocity of the ball so this is what we had done that we had taken the students to the uh, playground and then we have taught them the physics the momentum and all those things and then uh, brochure making use of good sense of humor the jokes you know you have to be very witty to write the slogans and to make the advertisement if we are going into the advertising and uh, innovative evaluation now i will take permission from sir i think i have taken more of the time so i will stop here sir because see knowledge is so much to be done but we have to respect the time okay sir yes can i stop yeah, here sure. thank you very much sir for giving me thank, thank you thank you so much uh, dr rashmi thank you ma'am and it was really an uh, awesome uh, presentation from uh, you and uh, it was uh, so nice to know about the uh, examples of uh, preparing the question paper by uh, einstein uh, it was really an amazing one for uh, almost all the educators uh, how they need to get the different answers for the same question from uh, as the children progresses in their is or her knowledge it was really a very nice example uh, quoted here and uh, it was a really wonderful explanation about the mythology of uh, covering all the fields of education really you, you have put everything into one and that itself uh, tells that uh, how holistic you are so very nice explanations and uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart uh, so before uh, i conclude uh, this session i would like to just uh, ask one simple question to all the three of you that is uh, <clears throat> ritika ma'am uh, kalpana ma'am and also uh uh rashmi ma'am so we have all talked about a uh, lot of uh, pedagogy uh, pedagogy and uh, other sort of things different um, uh, methodologies that we use for uh, teaching uh, my 
one question to all of you is that uh, can each one of you give one simple tip uh, for all the educators or the upcoming educators those who are, might be watching on the fbi live that uh, how to simplify the curriculum for this holistic education because already the curriculum has been uh, simplified by the government itself so out of that how they can simplify that curriculum to the need of the sub uh, are and uh, make it mo much more holistic for the learning of the students one tip from each one of you would really help all the educators those who are uh, watching this uh, event and it would really be a great help to all so shall we start from uh, ritika ma'am if you are there think, uh, she, oh no she has left because uh, she was to break the fast sorry for that yes uh, kalpana ma'am please uh, if you can give one liner tip for the all the educators or the upcoming teachers it will be a great help Kalpana ma'am? Kalpana ma'am, you have to unmute. I think, sir, you have to repeat your questions. Uh, Kalpana ma'am, uh, I was just uh, saying that, please unmute yourself. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, both of you that because uh, Ritika ma'am has already left. Uh, uh, one simple uh, tip to all the educators and the upcoming teachers uh, for uh, simplifying the simplified curriculum for making the children to learn in the holistic manner one simple tip for all those educators because we talked much about the pedagogy and uh, we let us also know much about uh, uh, simplifying the curriculum and the, the, about the curriculum please Sir, I think uh, she's not able to... Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you can please, uh, because let us not waste time. Time is running out. Kalpana, ma'am, can you hear me? I think she can't hear. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, but you have to, yeah. Yes, so, yes ma'am. Sir, question, I want you to answer it first. What do you want to ask, ma'am? Uh, Ma'am, I was uh, telling that all this while we talked uh, more about the pedagogy that uh, we are uh, using for the teaching this thing. But I just wanted a, one small tip from uh, both of you for the teachers, uh, all the educators rather, and also the upcoming uh, teaching faculties uh, and the educators where they can simplify the simplified curriculum because the curriculum has already been simplified or reduced uh, in size by the government. So, how do they simplify that simplified curriculum for uh, making the holistic learning for the students? One small tip so that uh, everybody can be helped out, out of that. Actually, yes. Yes, that, uh, that I have already explained my presentation. That is, we have to focus on the all down development of a child. So we have to execute and implement uh, all types of methods in one curriculum and in one session in one classroom. So like so that we can develop the life skill for the holistic development of the child. So uh, for teacher, it is necessary to upgrade their knowledge, their competency in the present mode of teaching and learning, and their awareness of the content and knowledge is spreading all over the world there. So when the teacher will upgrade themselves, they will definitely execute it and will be competent to uh, implement all types of pedagogy in the curriculum. And that will definitely support the holistic development of the child. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it was really nice uh, listening to you. And uh, Dr. Rashmi, ma'am, your tip. I just uh, I want to give this message to all the beautiful people the parents, the teachers, and others who are present here today, that uh, there are two, three things everybody is talking about that you just learn, unlearn, and relearn. 
because that is the time. And then we have to see whether we uh, are uh, uh, doing the assessment for learning or we are learning for assessment. That is also very important that we don't want that for the result card, getting the percentages the students are learning, but they are learning for their personal lives, social lives, and their professional lives. So the values and the joyful learning, and we have to teach them how to be happy, how to enjoy life, and how to have a, a you know social skills, emotional skills, and all that. So all of us should work together, and the NEP has already given us such creative pedagogies. So that way, let's all enjoy the teaching learning process. And with that, I say thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much. Everyone. So uh, I wholeheartedly thank all the three speakers, uh, Ms. Ritika Bhandari ma'am, Dr. Kalpana Dixit ma'am, and also Dr. Rashmi Tagi ma'am for uh, really giving us a very wonderful and then amazing uh, learning session throughout uh, this thing. And uh, I am very much thankful to our founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit sir, for uh, giving us this opportunity to present this uh, NEP across the globe and, uh, may, uh, and also in the country as well to make many educators get benefited out of this. Um, and I also thank all the dignitaries and the members of uh, IIU team and Last but not the least, uh, all the viewers and the listeners and those who made this uh, program a great success. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Namaskar. Namaskar, everyone. Thank you very much.